Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy and now we will continue the direct method step. The, th the third step in this uh, is the derivation of the element level matrices and the load vectors. So we will understand what type of matrix eventually we are going to derive. So for this we have to take an element first. Let's take eth element having length L E with a superscript and having two nodes U1 the two nodes 1 and 2 with the displacement U1 and U2 at each boundary so what we are gonna do for example we have to fix this element at one point. So for example, we're going to fix the eth element from the node 1. So if we're going to fix this, so let's make it right that this is fixed, this bar is fixed, or the element of the bar is fixed from the node 1. And we have to apply a force, let's call it P, because we're applying it in the node 2, so P2. And we are applying a force P2 at the node 2 and node 1. At node 1, there will be a reaction force that would be in the opposite direction, as we all know the action and reaction theory. So, 2, 1, why did it? Because the reaction at node 1, the force is at node 2. And here we have to recall the three main things three main concept from from the solid mechanics that is the stress force per cross section area strain according to this the change in the displacement per unit length and if I have to write the relation of stress and strain that we know that this is it and putting the values here we will have this so we can also write it as change in displacements right for the easy variation so P is equal to, uh, this is the load, E, and here A. A is the cross-section area because we are. There may be subscript variation, no, superscript variation, sorry for that, um, according to the element and according to the loads on the nodes that we are applying. So for this, um, add um, the reaction at one node one and the force at two we will write we will write it as p2 load at two is equal to this is the according to the dimension and we're taking the eighth element so that's why and u2 minus u1 by l because we have fixed node one so the displacement at node one would be zero so we will write it as p2 is equal to e a u2 by the length and we know the relation of reaction and the force applied that is r one is equal to minus p2 so this is exactly here that r1 would be equal to minus e a u2 by l so here we are with the reaction and here we are with the load that we are applying on the node 2 and we can do the same if we fix the element uh, at we fix the node 2 
and we're applying if we are applying force on the node 1 then there will be a reaction on the node 2 and by this we will be having these two values of the load applied on the node 1 and the reaction on the node 2 here you have seen the displacement u1 involved when we are fixing the node 2 here we have the displacement at 2 because we have fixed the node 1 so let's talk about the total force or the net force at each node so for example we are initiating with the node 1 so for n is equal to 1 or the node 1 the net force uh, let's represent it with the capital F is equal to because if if we have this so the total force would be R1 and P1 it, it, it is P1 the force that we have applied and this is the reaction right so at F1 there is the force that we have applied as well as the reaction when we have applied the force on the other end on the other side and if we're gonna write the values P1 is AEU1 over L and R1 is this minus EAU2 by so let's write and for the node 2 the total force would be P2 plus R2 and here we have P2 and here we have R2 so this is RE and it's, it's R2 not RE now we have two equations of the net force at node 1 and the net force at node 2 and we all are familiar with AX is equal to B that it is very useful when solving equations a system of equations so here we have we have two equations uh, so we will write this in this format so let's remove the stuff and just focus on our equations here we are with the equations and we have to write the matrix according to the displacement values u1 and u1 u2 and u2 as in our equations that we have two equations and two variables and we have a unique solution so right in there we have u1 and u2 two variables are in there uh, because we have to figure out the values of the displacement so these are the variable that is of the primary importance so let's write the matrix of the coefficient so here with the u1 that is a e by l and u2 minus a e by l and here it is u2 and it is u1 so u1 minus a e by l and here you do so this is a e positive a e by l and this superscript and here we have u1 and u2 displacement values and don't forget to write the total load or force so we have one matrix we have a vector and we have a vector here so this matrix this is known as the stiffness matrix and it is represented by capital K and this is the displacement vector represented by U and this is the force vector represented by F so here we have the relation that K U is equal to F so this is the stiffness matrix again this is the displacement vector and this is the load vector and yes we have to write the E as a superscript because we have derived this only for the element level and why this is known as the stiffness matrix the reason is its column represents the nodal loads or forces that we have derived well these nodes need 
to be applied to maintain the deformation so what eventually we need to figure out is the displacement vector because we have the known values of this stiffness matrix according to the structure or geometry of the problem as well as the total load so we can figure out u like taking inverse of it at every point so this is it this is the fourth step of deriving the local stiffness and load vectors in the next step we will assemble the information from each element to get the whole idea of the geometry so let's see you in the next part